crazy. I'm so happy to be catching up with you again. I have so many I... questions for you. Oh my God, it's, it's literally, when's the last time we talked? I was gonna say, is it have to, it has to be over two months ago maybe? Over two? Maybe it's been over two months. It's so crazy. Um, I know. You maybe look three. different. I do? Yeah. Oh. It, you look good. Really? No, yeah. I, I didn't do it. I just like, I just like in my, in my workout here. <laughs> yeah, but you got, you've got some cornrows going. Oh, or yeah. Or you have darker streaks. Is that what it is? No, I have light, I have blonde streaks. Oh, they're light streaks with the dark. So the light streaks, streaks are yeah. really, the dark really pop. Yeah, like here. I don't know if you could see better. Maybe this is better. You can see me better now, or probably, right? How's that? Yeah. I love it. I love all your greenery that you're always surrounded by. Oh, that's, you know, it's, you know, it's part of my thing that I've been doing recently. I started like a mental health. Um, I know. We're going to talk all about yeah. that. <laughs> um, but what have you been working on this summer, Jenna? Oh, man. I been working on a lot I've been doing like tons of sessions um and um I actually vocal vocal produced the first English song for BTS oh you did yeah it's called so tell us about that that's exciting how did um, you work on that again I'm always so fascinated with people's remote work situations these days especially when it comes to people like you and what you do and you're and having to be so collaborative so how did that exactly work with BTS well, I mean, first of all, like the, it's really cool. It has actually number one on the Hot 100, so that's that's really exciting. Congratulations! But um, but yeah. So in terms of doing remote, I mean, with them, it was like it was really cool because I, you know, they're amazing singers, and honestly, it was such a, a treat to work with them. And it literally um, was all just kind of me putting a lot of like harmonies and arrangements and sending it to them and they would cut their parts like that to me. I would put it in and and just, you know, kind of helping them with this English like presentation. That's great. Yeah, I mean that's that's probably a big part of it, right? Having yeah. to Well no, exactly. Since it deliver was the deliver the lyrics the right it, way, right? Exactly. But I mean they did a great job and um it was like, I mean, I was like blown away by it. So, and the harmonies were so fun. I don't know. Have you heard the song? I, yes, I've heard the song. Oh, Jason. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So good. You what, know, it, um, now that you've been working in quarantine for a few months, have you had any revelations regarding or more like your work process regarding work or your work process? Has anything, has, have you, has, have you gotten any uh, big revelations or has light been shed on sort of the way that you were doing things and the way that you're not going to be doing things any longer? Any new revelations about work? Um, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Um, I, I think that honestly going back, it's, I mean, it's going to be impossible to go back to like whatever normal was before, because I think that working now remotely, whether it be like, you know, on zoom, or just like any way that obviously like, you know, FaceTime or whatever, like, you know, now you don't have to travel halfway around the world to get something done, which is amazing. Right. You know what right. I mean? So right. now it's awesome because we have the, the opportunity to be able to work with people from like, I mean, I've been working with people from like a girl from Singapore, a girl from Turkey. Right. I've been working with, um, like obviously like Jenny's in New Zealand. I've been working with people from Australia. Like it's crazy. So it's amazing that you can just like hop on. That's a big revelation. That's a big, well, not a revelation, but it's a big pivot in a way. It's like now that we've been working smarter or having to work, which forces to work more efficiently and maybe smarter, more opportunities open up like these that you would never maybe have before, right? A hundred percent. Like it's so crazy. I feel like um, um, it's 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 basically. I think it was always obviously available to us, but it's just that we didn't take the opportunity. We didn't tap into it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that like think about it. It's like how many times like now you barely just call people. You Facetime everyone. You know what I mean? It's like I kind yeah. of like, well, people like everyone wants to Facetime now. <laughs> That's right. Everybody needs that to see that human connection. To to so, feel that human connection. Is there anything else, uh, anything like on the flip side of that, that you 
Well, I guess you're sort of saying that you're going to scrap, that you no longer need to do for your work. That is something that you're going to leave behind, that you were maybe doing before in your work, and it's like not, you realize it's not necessary anymore. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, like, I don't know that there's anything that I wasn't doing before that I wouldn't be necessary now. I think that it's more about, like, working smarter, if that makes sense. I think that, listen, I totally miss the in-person connection. You know, I think that that in-person connection, you, there's nothing, like, that beats it. Like, the magic of, like, being in the room with somebody, like, obviously you can't get on Zoom. Um, actually, I'd be, I've been surprised. I've actually been able to connect with a few people, like, even with you. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe Like, sometimes you're like, oh, how do I... I feel like you're genuinely my friend, which is- Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But at the same time, I mean, the in-person magic that happens in the room is sort of like, the, I mean, when can't there's nothing- Can't be replicated, can't be replicated. But in terms of just like being able to, you know, let's say if, if for me, somebody who travels to LA literally before Corona happened, I was traveling to LA every single weekend. So, because I live between New York and LA. I, think I know. I, we talked about that. So, so I was literally on a plane. Like, I went on uh, Monday Monday mornings, I would fly to LA, and then Friday, red eyes, I would go back to New York. So now, for someone like me, how it changes my life is I wouldn't have to do that much because I could be like, oh, let's hop on Zoom, like, two weeks. Yeah. Well, you know, so I guess you're scrapping all the, the travels become unnecessary because you can do what you do without traveling. Yeah, but, I mean, it's not all the travel I just think as much as much as much is there anything Jenna happening in music right now sort of generally speaking that you're particularly excited about just given these times oh um I think that it's like again I'll go back like brought people together in a whole nother way because I feel like I've connected with so many more artists just during this time everybody like more available to write because no one's touring. So every well, so that's everyone. true. People's availability and schedules are sort of shifting. So yeah, and yeah. It's like all everyone's time is spent on is like writing and being in the studio. So it's kind of nice for somebody like me who like vocal produces and songwriting. Obviously, because like I'm able to like connect with a lot more artists. And obviously, like even though you know, it's something, again, I can't see all of them in person, but I have been able to make very like amazing relationships um with artists surprisingly on zoom like where i literally like i like i forget that i haven't met them i'll be like i like it's such a weird thing to me i'm like right I feel, like so connected to you but we've actually never like like touched our skin together <laughs> yeah <laughs> right right okay speaking of skin show me your nails what's going on with these nails okay what is the combo of the red and the let's show me the combo nail is that a heart yeah it's a heart Oh, cute. Um, Wait. Speaking of yeah. green, speaking of green, this is exactly what I, I want to talk to you about your initiative, your give back initiative and your digital series, The Green Room. Can okay. you describe The Green Room for our followers? So, okay. So basically, I I started The Green Room, or I, start, I, I thought about The Green Room last year. Like, um, we were actually just like sitting down for a lunch and I was like, I would love to do something called the green room where I feel like people are able to see like the backstage sort of um, raw side of an artist or just like a side of a person, I guess, like the stuff that I get to see. The and right why now. the green room? Why green? Are well, you for the green like, room, like in entertainment? Yeah. 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 That was initially the, that was initially where it came from. I was like, Oh, how cool to be able to, I mean, obviously it would have to be, it's always how comfortable whoever is talking about whatever's going on in their life. Obviously I wouldn't want to force anything out of somebody that is comfortable, but I do think there's some things that, one of the things that I love about being a songwriter so much is like the therapy session. Like you go in and you can have like the worst time in your life or the best time and you can go into this room and feel like there's like, yeah, like a revelation or something that's just like, like better than a drug better than anything it just feels like all these endorphins it's like the uh, cool 
Never. Endorphins, a catharsis. It's right? cathartic. And it's like the relationship building. It's like unreal, you know? And like, relationships. You so the green be. room replicates that. The green room is sort of where an artist can talk more about behind the music, about what's behind the music. Well, okay, it's, it's more. Okay, it's what's it's behind more, the music. It's more, though, yeah. Explain. So, yeah, so it's what's behind the music, but also how mental health is obviously such a, you know, it's, it's, it, everyone deals with it to some extent. No matter, I mean, like, you know, it may be mild to, to, to big. You don't know what people, someone's going through, right? I mean, that's what we've seen over 2020, that's for sure, right? So, yes, yes. Um, but, but I mean, in my life, I've dealt with anxiety, like, pretty big time. Yeah, um, I want to talk to you about that. Yeah, and um, I, like, like, I was, you know, I was severely bullied in high school. Um, I was anorexic. Um, you know, obviously being a musician and, like, having the anxiety that comes with it, all the things about being a touring musician, which obviously, like, I'll tell you about later, but, like, for me, that was one of the reasons why I stopped doing my artist project because I was so, like, I had so much anxiety and I was always, like, so nervous. So I would have to, like, drink so much before I would go on stage just to, like, feel like a person, you know? So... Yes. Um, so, so of, uh, yeah, so you so the green room brings together a, a group of guests for kind of a round table discussion. Is that right? Yeah. So basically how it's been is like, so, um, it's, it's like me, an artist and a therapist, um, which, which is obviously chosen based on like whatever, you know, is appropriate to what we're talking about. So it's, um, it, you know, we've done one on body dysmorphia, we've done one on anxiety, one on meditation and how meditation is, you know, such an amazing way to, you know, obviously provoke thought and just in terms of like mindfulness and, and music, really. There's this guy, Richard Wolf, who's like amazing. And yeah, so I was going to talk to you about that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how do you go about finding your guests, though? So you just pick, pick, pick artists that you've worked with that would be interested in participating in a session? Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, so, so you know, honestly, in the beginning, I was just sort of winging it. Like, it wasn't like, yeah. I got out, sure. like, like, I mean, obviously, like I said, there was certain things that like, you know, obviously are very close to me. So I would, you know, I was like, I definitely want to do one on body dysmorphia. I definitely want to do one like on addiction. I got So you start with the topic is what you're saying. Yeah. You exactly. kind of start with a topic that you want to tackle that you th that you think that other artists might want to discuss, and then you kind of bring people in from there, and then you bring in your expert, right? Exactly. So 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 that's that's one hundred percent what it is, and it's something that I feel, you know, obviously I want I want to be able to relate to it, and if I can't, honestly, moving forward, obviously, that's fine too. But I mean, for the most part to some extent, you can always have a conversation to some level on, even if you don't relate, you know, obviously like, you know, somebody that relates, but right. I do relate to a lot of topics. Yeah. Them. And who have been your artist guests? Um, so Lennon Stella, um, Kaiza, mm -hmm. um, uh, Emily Kinney. She was um, a character on the walking dead. Um, yep. also a musician. She's amazing. Yeah. Um, Pixie Lott. I'm trying to think. We've had, this is, I've had eight, so I'm trying to remember. Okay, it's I'll really exciting. And congratulations. Also, congratulations, because you are supported by the Jed Foundation. Jade. Yeah. yeah. So tell us who they are. Well, first of all, did you know about the Jed Foundation before? I had read about it, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so the Jed Foundation is a nonprofit for mental health, and basically yeah. I um, first found out about them because um, Noah Cyrus, who I work with a lot, yeah. she, she was doing a lot with Jed Foundation. And, you know, obviously, again, anything that supports mental health, I'm always, like, completely on board. board. Yeah, and I just – I feel like it's, it's, you know, it's just as bad of a sickness being sick, if not worse. Like, that's how I feel about mental health. So I feel like it's something we all have to – pay attention to so the jed foundation i just loved everything they were doing so actually like um what do they do exactly Get, what what kinds of initiatives do they i mean they do? have they have a bunch of therapists that they work with all which is why we're, we're actually getting more of our therapists well that's what i was going to say you, you're sourcing your therapist through jed so far we've been doing that yeah that's great yeah that's so far great. We've yeah, and it's like, for instance, like, like, there's been some episodes where like, they, you know, they'll provide a whole list of like suicide helpline, things like that, where like, you know, well, we've had people on the show, hold on, there's gonna be a, 
There's a plane or a helicopter. Oh, the plane. Okay. Um, but um, we, yeah, we've had people watching that, that, that like, you know, there was this one girl from India that, that she was saying that she, you know, she didn't feel comfortable talking to her, didn't know where to go. And they had like a helpline in India. Things like so that. So it's, it's, it's a source of education as well. You're providing resources for people to, yeah. Um, yeah, um, no, that, that is really important. Um, who, have you had a favorite, who have been your favorite experts that you've had on? Oh, and I also wanted to mention before too, that oh, yeah. in my, um, on my Instagram, on the link tree, I provide um, a donation link. And as, when, we, when we upload the YouTube videos, we have a donation link and all the, so people donate. That's really important. I had read about that too, that you also are very cognizant about making sure that people donate to kind of keep this going. That's right? what I, yeah, so all the donations are going all to the Jet Foundation. That's the whole point of, you know, obviously. Yeah. Give back. To Working them. with them and then giving back to them. Yeah. So, so that's basically it. So, um, oh, and I did a Black Lives Matter episode as well, which was obviously like, it was, I mean, this year has been obviously so crazy. And I think in terms of that, it's so hard to speak on, on, on something so big, especially like, you know, yeah. so many different sort of um, ignorances, like, like we're, so, we can be so ignorant and not even like know it. And yeah. that's, nobody, that's yeah. part of, um, well, I was going to ask you if you have a favorite episode or session, would the Black Lives Matter session be one of them? Or? It was definitely one of them because I'll tell you, I was a little nervous to do it because I was, I, you know, I didn't want to be disrespectful or say the wrong thing or, you know, because I'm, you know, it's, it's true. I mean, it, it's white privilege, real, very real thing. So you have to like, I want to be cognizant of and be re and be respectful right so it's like you don't you yes who saying the right thing but you're saying the wrong thing and it yes up. so in that sense it was really like i think hard because i was just i want to learn and educate myself and i have been and i'm trying to but at the same time it's like you know we're just learning your you may flow who was on the episode Jenna? so my my friend melanie smith who's been my friend for years she's like amazing songwriter actually she actually works for um, a nonprofit called Music Forward. So we added them as an also as a another sponsor for the Green Room, but we're also a donation for them. So, so great. So the Music Fo Music Forward is basically a nonprofit that helps like musicians that can't necessarily afford to like go to a studio or like, you know, learn the guitar. Like just it provides resources for, for kids that don't have the resources. So basically, um, we linked up with, with her, and then that's, so the Music Forward thing is the logo on the e-flyer as well. So we, and again, I have the donation link in my. Um, what were some of the key uh, things that you spoke about on that episode? What, what was like, a, what was a big takeaway that you used to um, I think that was the biggest takeaway because, like, I. To be aware of the things that you might not be aware of. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's really interesting. Like, I feel like um it's just saying those small things that that you you wouldn't even th we're thinking that like this is something that totally like you're being you're saying something right or you're trying to like relate in some ways and you're actually saying something that's really insulting Do you know yeah. what I mean? not like in a in a way sure obviously here's the thing like because I was talking to my friend Melanie Smith and the, the, the therapist on that episode was called Takesha White and she's, um, she actually, I met her like probably like five years ago and she's been on like Good Morning America and she's like, like she, her story is incredible. But anyway, they were very like accepting and amazing, but also challenging and, and also just taught me things when I was saying things, they would be like, well, what do you mean? That's not like, what do you like how can you defend it was just kind of put me on the spot where my heart was racing and I was like oh my god I don't know like what to say I don't want to be insulting but they knew that yeah I mean I, the discussion was forcing you to be more clear and be more articulate and be more thoughtful right exactly exactly and I think that like at the end of the day obviously they wouldn't be doing it if they knew they obviously know my heart's in the right place and that I want to learn of course um you know, the whole point is to teach somebody, help them right. be able to know right. 
Right. And you said, so Jenna, you were, you, you touched on this earlier. You said that you struggle with anxiety personally. Yeah. When and how did you first recognize that in yourself? Oh, wow. I mean, when you say recognize, like, do you mean like, because it's weird. When I think about that, when I think about it, like when you recognize anxiety, sometimes you can feel it, but not know what it is. So you mean like, when did I actually know? Well, that's interesting. No, I mean, one of my next questions for you is, you know, how is it affecting your work? So I'm assuming that maybe, you know, was anxiety getting in the way of your daily life? And, you know, when did you take notice and say, this is a thing, there's something going on, I have to address it? Yeah, so, so, okay, so I'll tell you like one significant thing that happened to me. Um, so when I first got signed to, to Island Def Jam, um, you know, obviously, it was a very exciting time in life. And like, you know, that, that, you know, seemingly, it would be great on paper. And obviously I thought I felt really good about it. And I, I did feel good about it. But I went to LA on my first writing trip. And I remember like walking down West Hollywood, and I literally had the craziest kind of Pack of my life it was like I thought it was I never had one so, um you know obviously it felt like a heart attack I like couldn't breathe I like fit, I like fell to the ground I remember I called my dad my dad's actually um he was on one of the green episodes actually but um I called my dad dying like I I don't I just have to like call I was like it was the craziest like thing ever and um anyway an ambulance ended up coming to get me and I went to the the hospital they rushed me in and basically were like, you're having a panic attack. Yeah, I mean, that's a big moment, right? For, for you to, have, you know, you, you had really intense physical, physical symptoms, you know. And I think in terms of just recognizing how bad the anxiety was, I think that was like the very, like, that was the poignant um, moment because I think that um, it made me realize, like, how I was, like, repressing maybe because I think that like so many feelings you don't recognize as anxiety so like to now so before in the previous parts of my life obviously like you know like I said I was bullied in high school like pretty badly like I everyone was like Jenna has a fat ass and they put signs <laughs> about me all um like put like huge signs in like foyer right and those things really stay with people you know they, they don't it may have happened in your youth but there are pieces of that that remain for me. Oh my, I think about it. Yeah. I think about it every day. Like, I mean, they would like, people would come by and like smack my ass and like put a sign and I wouldn't know it was on the whole day. Oh and boy. Yeah, that's not nice. So I got my head smashed into a mirror with an egg. I got chased. I got told that I was like ugly, um, all this stuff. And then, and then um, that led me to being like severely anorexic. And I was like, my kidneys almost failed. Like it was, crazy yeah. I went through yeah. I'm really open about this stuff because I really feel that it's so healing to talk about it like I don't feel like oh this is something I have to hide because I honestly think that so many people like this is what I love about again writing because it's so like when you tell somebody it makes them immediately feel like oh there's this that like relief of thinking like oh my god I thought I was crazy but this happened to me too you're like well oh. I was just talking to our cover star Dove Cameron about this about I love feeling her. You know about the about wanting to talk about things and not suppress things and not uh, and not succumb to being you know told by people you can't talk about this. She talks about how she feels very comfortable talking about the things that she's talking about um, in terms of her mental health. So it's important. I think you know it's important to talk about it. It's so important. I just think that it really like for me and for others. I hope it's like super healing. It's like nice feeling to be able to share that with with people and honestly it connects you even like first meeting somebody and you can tell it almost like makes you more vulnerable with somebody right away it's like oh, okay yeah you're a real human it's disarming it's yeah. disarming we're all human yeah was it was anxiety affecting your work in any way so yeah i mean that's what i was so i was saying that in the beginning i know i was jumping i was jumping too fast when we first no 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 we, we we did cover it we talked about it you said that you were working on something and your anxiety sort of got in the way yeah so basically um like as a as like a touring artist um i my i had such bad anxiety because i think that and again i'm trying to remember like 
like when it started and actually I always feel like and this is the part that I don't know so I'm this is this maybe is something I'm still exploring but I always felt like nervous even I've been doing this my whole life like yeah I've been performing since I was five or six right. but I always like, I always sh like sh would shake and get really really nervous um and obviously I know a lot of people get nervous but I would get like highly nervous and I think over the years and as like things happened to me as that it increased it got worse and worse it's obviously like you know it's 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 like that like I don't know somehow I developed this like people pleaser thing in me and I'm like it's always like you want to you're not just I, sometimes I'm so jealous of the people that are like I don't give a fuck like I'm just right gonna... you're you, you you felt like you were constantly looking for people's reaction or reassurance exactly and I think... yeah Dove had mentioned that there was a point in her life too when she was you know basing things on sort of what other people you know were bringing into her life or saying to her you know that's exactly what it is like that's 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 I think like and I'm still working on that I'm not gonna lie like that well, I was gonna say how do you how do you keep it at bay today I, I'm assuming that green green room episodes probably help you greatly right? oh I mean um, so much there yeah go ahead but is there anything else that you do to keep the anxiety at bay I mean honestly like I'm trying to be more active, which is why, which is why I started almost like in the midst of helping others. I hope to like also help myself through, you know, being able to have a therapeutic sort of open relationship to, to problems and just being able to, you know, freely be able to speak about it. And yes, I think it really has been helping me, honestly. And I think, yeah, you know, I have had my bouts with therapy and I, and I, you know, I, I found one particular person that I really, really like. So, um, you know, doing like, I, I, I find that <clears throat> in a weird way, again, going back to songwriting, it's almost like, for me, that's like, the like being in, like creating is like, so therapeutic to me, like when you're genuinely doing it from all the right places. Not like, oh, because you're going to get this song that, like, is going to be the next single. Or, like, you're on a deadline and something just needs to be yeah, made. Not, yeah. Not that. Because it's like, you you know, I mean, obviously, it's grateful to have it as a job, right? But, like, of course, to make music, to be like, oh, I'm chasing this single or I want to get this or this is, like, everyone's going to talk about it. But like, to write music because you want to and your heart has to, I mean, there's nothing to me that's more cathartic. Like, really, yeah. not to be, you know, cliche or cheesy, but, like, genuinely like sometimes when I'm just like outside with my guitar just like and I find like a lyric and I'm like oh my god like this is crazy like it just feels like it's so my whole body feels like it relaxes you know? I was gonna say it must feel like a release when that happens right like a crazy amazing release it really to... does. it really does like do you know what I mean like it's one of those things like even when I was talking to, to Richard Wolf the other um the last episode had with with my friend Pixie Lot on um, music and mindfulness. When I was taking, when I was talking about all this stuff, he's like, "This is literally what I, why I got into." It. Actually, funny enough, he started getting to um, he started getting into meditation because he had a panic attack. So that was the whole reason why he sort of started his whole journey. Wrote a book, like all this kind of stuff, and it, you know, he said that because um, I always say this is like something I always feel like like there's like a divine intervention between the universe and what happens when you're like writing. Cause it's like a lot of times I could be just like walking around going to the grocery store and never of any sort of ideas that I would when I'm like, when I like, when there's like a connection, you just like, you're almost like not, you're so out of box. Weird. Yeah, right. Feel like <laughs> and get when you meditate or when you go to a, a therapy session and you feel like, wow, something really just clicked and I understand my brain a little bit more. I feel like that's the same in my experience with therapy. I feel like that's what I get sometimes from, from writing or from just able that's so interesting. Yeah, the same thing comes out of music. But that's when really not again when it's not coming from yeah a business standpoint sometimes because that part takes. I mean, I hate to say it, but it does take the the joy out of it sometimes. Yeah, I mean, if there's just a, a things to remember and things to keep in mind and people to talk to and you know, but you're talking about a more organic way of sort of stumbling on a moment of creativity, right? 
A hundred percent, because that's why you do it, right? It's like at the end of the day, we all do music, or when, when we're in creative fields, we do it because it does something to us in our brains that really excite us, and it's it's a passion field. It's something that like gets your blood boiling, right? So and you have to be passionate about it. Yeah, like, you know, I get it. Like if it becomes your job, I mean, you're obviously lucky, but at the same time, you have to be careful that, you know, it's just like how do you. I don't even know a good example, I guess, to draw, but I guess you have to be careful that you can still have it. It's the same way as, I guess, having a hobby, and then your hobby all of a sudden turns into your job. Is it as fun anymore? You have to like, yeah. make sure that you can still have that experience that you first remembered that you love about it, um, and that's what I try to maintain, and, like, I love to sometimes just have those moments. I mean, that's very helpful, honestly. So Yeah. Wow, I love this conversation. <laughs> I know, I'm so excited. I've, I've been dying to talk to you about Green Room for a really long time now. Oh. Um, and I'm glad we got into that topic. Who, on another topic, who are your favorite artists right now? Ooh, who are my favorite artists? I mean, that's probably the question of the century for you, but is there anybody that's top of mind? I mean, listen, I'm always gonna be biased. You know me from the last time I was like, um... My, my people. <laughs> like the people that I work with. I mean, all, like, it is true, right? Because, uh, listen, as a songwriter, you kind of get to, like, work with people you love, right? It's like, at the end of the day, you could be like, oh, I love this artist, so I want to work with them. And then, but yeah, I mean, Benny really is one of my favorite artists. And, and you know, I love Lennon, too. Like, you know, but aside from the girls that I work with, and, um, I mean, um, I love Remy Wolf. I put Remy on Wolf is on your playlist. You're yeah, I didn't afraid. know I was allowed to expose that. I didn't know if I No, did. it's, it's <laughs> in our title for our chat. Um, but you've created a Fallen for Fall playlist, which we're going to get into right now. Okay. Um, and Remy Wolf is on it. Um, before we do that, I want to, I just, the idea of playlists. What do you think? I'd love to get your point of view on, like, what is, what's the recipe for a great playlist? What's needed when you think about creating a playlist and the flow of a playlist what what are the components there well it's really okay so that's really that's really interesting because when I was making even the playlist for you I was thinking about it I was like I mean listen it really depends in my opinion like what like is it what kind of playlist you know what I mean like is it like do you were like what are your faves right now for the fall right but I mean is it like I mean, if you were to say, hey, what do you listen to when you're sad? Or what do you listen to when you're mad? You just, you actually just brought me to one of my <laughs> other questions for you. I love this. But every time we talk, I feel like this happens. I know why. It's like, I love it. Every time we talk, I feel like we just like get I, thing and it gets better. What I was <laughs> going to literally ask you is, I know, here I am putting you on the spot again. You know, I love to do this. Yeah. Pick, oh my God. Can you pick, can you pick, let's say three moods or moments in a day or in a week of activities that you think deserve their its own playlist? Like I, I love this question. This is a very fun question. Um so pick three or two or one. Um okay, no no no, I, I can pick three. Um, um I mean I have to pick sad. Yeah. Of the e the emo. I have to pick sad. Um I think, like, okay, I want it. I don't want to call it the workout playlist because that's really cheesy. The I mean, what? But I feel like the getting hype, like get the get hype playlist is like. Yeah, so the like the like pregame playlist. Oh, like, yeah, game like so like that. All right, is that our next? Is that our next? Is that your next playlist for Story I, and Rain? Pregaming. Pregame one is so like if it's not the workout. Yeah. Like, right? After like on weekends or you're like having it some drinks or whatever and you're like put it on like Drake or you just need to like switch mood it's almost like a mood switcher right the pregame oh. it's like are you kidding me a hundred percent like and it's so funny Drake is like known for he can actually be on the sad playlist and the, the turn up that's why <laughs> <laughs> I love it but um, um wait I want to say one more would it um I yeah so we have sad we have like kind of like a pregame we have a pregame and then oh I think we could have we could have a mellow, but not sad. You know, like, it, there's a difference between mellow and sad. So I think well, what would you be using the mellow playlist for? Melancholy. You know what I mean? Mellow would be oh. like... Oh, so we want to do sad and melancholy, and there's yeah. a difference. Like, to me, they're... I think let's go with mellow more than melancholy. I think mellow because, like, 
I think I'm looking at it like I'm looking at like the nature and I'm just thinking like there a playlist that just gets you like thinking inspiring ah thought, like a thought like a thought provoking playlist. a thought provoking see this is why okay we're gonna have to come up with like a quippier name for that playlist, oh I know that's good I get that um, I get that but like those kind of playlists like you need yeah life you know what I mean you need that like oh that's absolutely um and I would put Remy on that one, I think. I was just going to say. You would? Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about when you were putting together the fall playlist for us? What kinds of things were going through your mind? Okay, so I was just thinking about my personal favorite artists and my personal favorite songs. You know what I mean? I was just like, you know. Um, sort of things that you wouldn't mind playing in your home all for the next three months over and over again? Exactly, exactly, exactly. I mean, I, to me, like, it's um it was like a mixture between like the pregame it was like, <laughs> i feel like a lot of the more the pre i was like trying to think of the ones I it was like a, it's like a fall pregame playlist okay everybody so now that now, i like that now that we have your fall, fall it's called fallen for fall um fall? and there are about 11 songs i think and it's kind of to get you hyped up, right? It's a fall playlist to get you kind of. I like that for fall. I mean, come on. For, yeah, which, well, it's like switching seasons, kind of at, like ringing in a new season, finishing off another. Oh. I like it. Um, oh. Let's it. talk about your playlist exactly. I'm going to name the songs that you picked. Okay. Drake, Laugh Now, Laugh Now, Cry Later, Labyrinth, Still Don't Know My Name, Benny Snail, Little Mix, Holiday, F2020, Avenue Beat, Overwhelmed, Royal and the Serpent, Lost One, Jasmine Sullivan, Brandy, Borderline, that's a good one, to, <laughs> on the, on the, on the, yeah, on the, the topic that we're talking about, The Recipe, Aluna George and Kay Trinata, uh, Birthday, Disclosure, Kilani and Sid, and Monte Carlo, Remy Wolf. Right? It's definitely diverse, right? It's very diverse, but that's uh, so. Is that part of a recipe for a good playlist? Even even if a playlist is within theme, do we still want diversity, or can sometimes a, can a playlist be like one note, for lack of a better word? Okay, so you know what? Honestly, like I I have I don't I haven't made like a ton of playlists. So like, mm -hmm. like funny, I should make more. I mean, I've I made like. A couple last year then when I was like oh, I want to make like my I think I made a winter playlist or something yeah and like well, we love that you make them for us so I know I challenge but I the thing about playlists is like I mean listen if I was like gonna DJ or something and I wanted it to be like curated playlist I feel like it would be a lot more it would be a lot different does that make sense like this playlist this playlist is like strictly just like scattered artists that I fuck with okay you know what I mean like I don't know yeah. And when you said fall, I guess it's just. Like, I like it. Like, Scattered artists that I fuck with. <laughs> I get it. I mean, it's just kind of like a whole different type of. I mean, I think when I'm thinking about those songs, minus like the Remy Wolf, which I would put in like the the um, mellow category, like snail. Thought provoking. Thought provoking. Um. Or yeah, thought provoking. Exactly. Oh yeah, that's a good one. We, we sharpened our focus there with, with thought provoking. Sharpened it. I was trying to do the pencil. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, like, uh, like I was trying to think as you were naming the songs, like Drake would be on the pregame. I think Ben would be on the pregame. Have you heard Snail? So good. Yeah. So good. Um, uh, I listened to the whole list. Um, yeah, let's go. Uh, so anyway, that's what I, so what are your th three favorite tracks on it? Oh, on my, on mine? Um, yeah. Well, what do you have to say about Benny Snail? Let's talk about that. Thoughts. I know. I'm so, my thought. I just think it's like, so, I love, I love her because she's so innovative, you know, like she's so creative and it's so different. And it's like nothing you've heard before. So that's why I really like working with her. And also, I mean, obviously I didn't do that song. I just really like, was like, wow. Like, you know, it's like on the inspiring playlist. Wait, is that the, th oh, the thought? I can't get it right. The Same thing. Same thing. We'll work it out. We'll figure out the details for that yeah. one. It's like that. You listen to like their songs and it makes you want to do better shit. You know what I mean? Like, um, so to I like that. falls into that category. It's like when you're, you're like, oh, wow, I never thought of this before. 
sound like challenge to try something or try this or I've never you know used that sound before like I wonder how she got that sound or whatever you know what I mean mm -hmm. and why did you choose Remy Wolf Monte Carlo um because it's just like that perfect okay it's like the perfect balance of like thought-provoking and mellow it puts you in like such a space of like where like oh like just like it, it kind of like gives you that thing that we were talking about where it's just like makes you feel like good and you don't know why you're just like wow I just feel like rid of my anxiety and I'm just like I love this music um plus it's thought-provoking challenging and inspiring there you go um, um and then I guess like still don't know my name and the Drake song is probably like tied for my third choice because I mean the Drake always comes out with Bob's so it's kind of like he's just he's just Oh, it, every every time you put them on, it just puts you in that type of mood where you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this is a transporting. Vibe. And then with Labyrinth, he's, I mean, talk about thought provoking. Are you kidding me? Like this guy is the craziest, most talented genius, and you listen to anything he creates. Not only does is it like emotionally riveting, and you're like, wow, I don't even know if I'm listening to a human being right now because you're just it's like so insane. But it just like moves you in all these ways. And why'd you put Brandy on the list who hasn't made music in quite a while? <laughs> it's interesting. No. Um, Tell me your, give me your thoughts on Brandy. Okay, so she's like my favorite artist of like all time. Really? Yeah, so, well, her and Mariah Carey, like it's quite crazy because I started singing because of them. That's all I listened to growing up. I mean, I that was like, those were like my two quintessential like, singers that I listen to like Brandy has my favorite voice to ever exist but well favorite female voice like it's Brandy or Donny Hathaway those are like my favorite I think we voice. talked about that um and Billie Holiday actually but but like on the topic of mood I feel like it's very different where I would put the Billie Holiday versus like Brandy and Mariah like they're just totally different I think that like for me as a singer and like my love for arm and stuff has come so much from from them so to me like no matter what brandy puts out like her voice is just butter to me i just love it and it's always a vibe and it's also nostalgic you know what i mean because it's like yeah um and it's crazy because even like when i was first um kind of like i guess it was when, i don't remember when i was first when i first got signed or whatever i like i like sang with her once at this this like oh really random house party and I'm like, oh my god this is like mind-blowing but it's, what a moment. But but it's crazy because like I think now today like being in like you know, working in the music business and, and sort of being in the two thousand twenty music business, it's like you're kind of like sometimes to me, you're like I don't know if I said this last time when we spoke, but it's almost like learning that Santa Claus doesn't exist. You know, like when you Yes, call, you did. You did sort of say I, that. I, I remember that now, yeah. It's an example because you know, like Brandy and Mariah were like God to me, right? So then you go into the music business and you're like, okay, and then there's like the Ariana's who's like, I, I bet you like all the young girls now, that's Mariah to them or whatever, right? But it's like, I, you know, it's like a different way that you're seeing, as much as you admire the talent, it's different, but it's it's like, I'm I'm in it more you're than- You're on the inside. Yeah, we did talk about that. I think I, I, think I probably talked about um, always being a fan of magazines and being a big consumer of magazines and fashion magazines. And then once you work on, on magazines yourself or like you, you work on a particular magazine that you grew up reading, um, it changes your perspective. Your perspective is forever changed on it because you're now on the inside seeing, of, you know, how things get, you know, put together. So it just changes your, your perspective. So now that you're on the inside, I see what you're saying. Like you, you're looking at these people that were like, you know, favorites and muses to you. And now you get to see it from a different perspective from a, like a production perspective, I guess. A hundred percent. That's the thing. And I think that like, when I think about, um, sorry, there was like a B. I'm like, <laughs> so that's not good. I know. Um, um, but, but, um, I think that when I think about like a Brandy or a Mariah, I'm like, it makes me feel like this like intangible thing where it's like, it, it reminds me of my childhood and everything that like that, that like, that unknown and that like magic. And I think that like, yeah, it, it doesn't take away from how great anything is now. It's just that like, I continue to like 
would put people like that. Oh, Jasmine Sullivan's another one, you know? Yes. That I would put on my playlist and continue to do so. Like, people like Summer Walker and, like, SZA and ob obviously, like, take that space. And I love, you know, obviously, I love them musically, too. But it feels like the nostalgic aspect of Jasmine or Brandy or whatever is, like, it's like something. Nostalgia is a huge part of music. It's a lot of what people love about music. You can't, nostalgia is a big piece of that. A hundred percent. I actually got to, write, got to write with Jasmine last year too, which was crazy. I was like, oh my So God. exciting. And they're like, literally, I'm telling you, like in terms of singers, like it doesn't get bigger for me, like period. Like yeah. from, um, like Kim Burrell is another one. She's like a, a, a gospel singer, but like her voice is just like, I mean, they're like the best of the best in my, you know, in the world. Well, I can't wait to do more playlists with you. We obviously have some that we just, we just stumbled on during our chat today. What are your plans this weekend? Anything fun? By the way, just before we do that, we should do um, an old school playlist. That'd be kind of fun. You want to do an old school one? I'm always down for an old school playlist. Are you like kidding me? Fun because like oh my gosh, old school shit. We actually have a lot of old school playlists on our Story and Rain Spotify channel. So I would love your old school playlist. For really? That. I would love That's I would you want to make that one next up? Is that next up for yeah. us? Should we? Oh, please. I'm always about an old school or a, like a re retro vibes. Let's do it. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Well, okay, let's, before we, before we wrap up, yeah. like, give me one song that might be on that playlist. I was just going to say, well, now it's not really old school enough though. Um, um, I was going to say like, uh, it's not old school enough because Amy Winehouse is also one of my like very, it's not old school enough, right? Well, it could, well, mm -hmm. Not it's not old old school. Yeah, yeah. It's not oh, that's not old school. Let's not do that. It's not old school enough. Um, I would do um a song for you, Donny Hathaway. His his perfect. You love Donny Hathaway. <laughs> I love it. I know you do. All right, what are you doing this weekend? Anything fun? Girl, I wish. I'm working. I'm always working. Like, I that's a one. Can't you take some time to do have a fun day? Yeah, no, you know what? I really do. Honestly, I need to get a piece, like, take a piece of my own advice because I, I know I'm the same way. Right? Because I'm, yeah. we complain and then we just go and do it anyway. We're like, oh, yeah. we're so tired. Well, there's just, there's always, there's always something to do, right? There's always something to work on. But that's the thing. Always something to work on. And I feel like I have fun. Like, I like it. But at the same time, I'm like, I really do want to do something fun. But I just remembered, I do, I'm taking a boat ride on Monday. So that's good. Yay. Oh, that's so fun. Everyone I know is doing boat rides. Um, um because you're in the East Coast, though, right? Yes, I am. I'm in New I'm, York. I, I'm going to text you about it because there's an amazing boat that goes on, like, the, um, what would it be? Is it the, be the Hudson River, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you been on, have you ever done a boat ride on the? I have. You have? Like, on, like, what? Well, no. Hold on. We were supposed to do one. I think I know what you're talking about. We were supposed to do it with a group of friends, but the weather became bad, so we couldn't do it. Oh my god! It's honestly, it's my so beautiful. Like I know, I know. I've been. Th it's so funny. I was actually just having a conversation with my brother about boats. I was talking to Alana from our team about boats, who was just on a boat. It's like it, I, I don't. I, I guess you know because we can't really travel anymore and go like to far flung places to go to see the water or be or be on a beach. I know. Like just a boating sounds like a fun proposition right now. Well, that's all, that's totally it. And honestly, like, just the fact that, you know, like, the other day I was going to say, like, we went on a boat for, like, hours and just, like, worked on the boat, be on the water. Be, I haven't been to a restaurant for, like, six months. I don't know about you. Like, not Oh, I have already. Wow. You, we've got to, we've got to get you, you got to, you got to tackle that one, Jenna. I know. Well, no, I was just going to tell you, I haven't been to one, but that one day we stopped to a restaurant. Um, on the water, which was so nice. It was. Are you talking about over by? Um, I think I know where you're talking. By Brookfield Place. Oh no no no! Way further. Oh okay. It was like, but it's like I don't even know. It, we 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 drove the boat quite far out. It was like for took a, like from because I'm in New Jersey right now, so it was like from like the Alpine Deck. I don't know if you know where that is, but she, for like it took three hours to get there. It's kind of long. Fun. But it was so cool it's just I felt like I was in like a tropical vacation for like two there seconds. you go that's all you need just be surrounded by that kind of peace and nature and the water I think so it's just like you know again it's there you can't talk about mental health it's such a 
it, there's obviously a proven fact. By the way, before we go, I'll say too, another thing about green. It's like proven that green evokes um, some sort of like um, calmness and like stimulation and like you know, there's something about looking at green, which I didn't know about that before. When yeah, green, yeah. Really green growth. Yeah, it makes sense. It's interesting, right? No, but I mean, yeah, it is. But even just, again, I'm like looking at the trees and it, I'm just like, it makes you feel alive. Yeah, hiking can do that for you. Jenna, it was so great catching up with you. you I think we have to wrap up. I think we're going to get cut any minute now. Oh, are, okay. Well, I can't Probably. stop talking to you because you're like the most fun. Oh, I know. I could talk. We're doing this in like a week or two. Oh, we're, we're doing it next month. And so. I'm sorry that I always seem to have like, uh it's because you're you're out amongst nature. We just talked about that. That's why. But I kind of love it because I feel like it's a nice feeling to be out here. But it's okay. Next time we'll get it right. I'll comment on time. You do your thing outside. We'll try to. We'll try to. We'll we'll make it work. We'll make Bye, it. Bye, Jenna. Hey, winter. We can't do outside anymore. So we'll have to figure it out. <laughs> we, you need to yeah pick a new spot for winter. Bye. I'll I'll text you. Bye, Mama. Bye. <laughs>